14 years is a long time to do the same thing. 14 years is a long time to do the same thing. 14 years is a long time to be doing the same thing. In an instant, you know the idea. In an instant. Then, the thing is translating that to some medium. It could be a film idea, or a painting idea, or a furniture idea. It doesn't matter. It wants to be something. It's a seed for something. In the house is Mr. Mark Dalzell. Hi, Mark. Hey! Oh, I see. I missed that part. In the house is Mr. John Fidelli. Hey, baby. How you doing? And my name is Mr. Michael Rosso. I'm not sure if I like No, these are I was disturbing just, looking. I was just... It's been sitting all summer. Oh. So I've been explaining to John and Mark that today's our FPP's 14th birthday. Wow. It's the actual date of the birthday. Yes. Today's wow. the actual birth of the podcast. Wow. wow. Well, we sat down, me, you, and Dwayne. Yes. And first started. I don't even know if you were on the first episode. I probably wasn't. It was just an idea. I love ideas. From my, no, from my favorite artist, and that artist's name is David Lynch. Really? It's very inspirational. And ideas uh, come to us. We don't um, really create an idea. We just catch them, like fish. How did you get? You're saying this idea is. I sit. I'm sit alone home at night on my soft couch watching YouTube interviews, and this one I saw David Lynch, and he will he will say in the, his very unique, you know, like. So you get an idea, and it is like a seed, and in your mind the idea is seen and felt, and it explodes like uh, it's got electricity and light connected to it. And it has all the images and the feeling. And it's like, in an instant, you know the idea. In an instant. It's true. An idea. We take these things for granted, Mark. Mark O'Brien. Oh, no way. You are on the Film Photography Podcast. Oh, I am. Holy mackerel. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Perfect timing. Mark, what was your idea of the day? We were just talking about how... You know, we all have ideas, and then we act, we, we, we create with that idea. Ah, uh, my idea of the day? Yeah. Probably to call it probably, us. It was probably yesterday when I finished my new zine I'm working on. Ooh. What's, oh. What's that called? It's called Panazine. And uh, it's just going to feature um, panoramic images from cameras, panoramic cameras. And um, the first one is about the sprocket rocket. Sprocket. Well, and it's, yes. it's a different format. It's four and a, four and a quarter by 11 inches. So, so, yeah. You're going to be driving through these parts soon? Um, I hope to be up there in late October. I don't know the exact date yet. Oh. Okay. So it's the, the last week of October. I call them to, you know, see if you guys are okay. Oh, and, that's uh, sweet. You know, Very good. All right. Man. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> All right, so just want to let you guys know it's FPP's birthday. So what? <laughs> Next. <Yeah. laughs> Did I just unplug myself? Hello? Hello? No, no. No. So we have been off the air for the summer, so we have accumulated a lot of uh, emails and letters from people. Mm-hmm. So let's get right into it. How come you uh, have all the letters? No, I knew it was here. I'll no. take that one. All right. Photography curriculum. This is from Chad Siders. Our photography club at Southeastern High School is becoming... A class in a few weeks. I've been thinking all summer of content for the class. Uh, originally, the class was going to be a year long, but uh, they've decided to make it a semester instead. So, uh, let's see. My plan is to use point and shoot cameras for the semester semester class, teaching the basics of compositing, framing, etc. And in the year long course, we'll start with digital for the students to learn the basics of exposure, triangle, focus, and composition. Then move to film, where we'll all learn to develop and scan. I was wondering if you or any of the crew would be able to point me to some good, low-cost, or even better, free curriculum for these courses. Wait a minute. I was going to ask him for some curriculum tips. Because you're a too professor, late. too. Yes. He got you first. I'll tell you what. I brought some books today that... Maybe will help. You should look up, because these are excellent. Okay. So stay tuned, Chad. Yeah, yeah. Like, hang on. Just skip ahead, like, 40 minutes, and then you'll hear an answer. Curriculum? Oh, I, I've been communicating with Chad. I don't oh. know if I gave him any curriculum tips. I was probably saving it for the show, but now I don't have any. So so I read it for no reason. No, we wanted to do a shout-out to him and his class. Oh, okay. Shout-out. 
And stay tuned, empty ones. Chad, because Mark's got some valuable books that will help you with your curriculum. Yeah. Next up. Yeah. Uh, hello, Michael. Regarding ECN2 processing, Moody's Film Lab in Seattle recently opened and is doing full ECN2. Oh. I've had them run Vision 350D, 250D, and 500T stocks through and have been incredibly pleased with the results, more so than even Blue Moon, which I think oh. is a pretty high bar. Any chance FPP will be stocking 120 Vision 3? Right now I'm getting hand rolls of 500T from friends of friends in L.A., but would love to get a more consistent supply mm. and some other stocks as well. This guy's jonesing. That's a great question about oh. about uh, Vision Three stock is a motion picture film. It's the you know, it's the classic Hollywood motion picture film. It has the Remjet on it, so you can't send it to just any old lab. You have to send it to you know a more specialized lab. Traditionally, it's never available. It's only available mm. in spe- specialty shops like the FPP, and even harder to find in 120 because. Kodak makes the film in 65 millimeter. Uh, 120 film is 61.5 millimeter. So that 65 millimeter strip of film needs to be sliced mm. to 61.5 millimeter and then rolled into backing paper. It's tough. Tough. Who does that? Uh, Mike does. Well, it's, it's $40 a roll, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's very difficult to do by hand. Uh, if someone wanted to buy a 70, 65 or 70 millimeter roll of film on eBay, let's say, then you can go and buy a film, sli- a film slitter, hmm. and then you could like pull your film pull it through. through. Yeah. yeah, it's a uh, DIY project. So wherever... But you have to do that all in the bag or a dark room. Oh, yeah, That's dark a drag, room. Right? That would be dark room. Yeah, you wouldn't want so to do it in the bag. wherever yeah, Peter is true. getting, sourcing his 120 Vision 3 stock, that's somebody who's very passionate about doing a handcrafted item. So he's got a good connection then. Yeah, it's good. I think you should keep going. He's got I good, mean, good friends of friends. Yeah, I mean, I never say never, but at this point, at this moment, uh, it's not available. But he he mentioned um, a lab that's doing EC Moody's. Moody's, Moody's yeah. And I, you know, that kind of gave me an idea, John. Oh, is that right? Everything David? starts with an idea. To, uh, to give a shout out to some of the folks that really been helping us uh, with our supplies for rolling our 35 millimeter FPP films. Like, shout uh, it, shout it, shout it out loud. You got to roll some film. The darkroom.com. Yes. I just communicate with the darkroom.com. So, it, this is kind of an order of supply. So, the darkroom.com has been supplying us with those em- empty film canisters and outer cans. Mm. If you search on like flickr.com, you'll see a picture of Mark swimming in a room filled uh, with empty right. canisters. There's a video of me. There's a, pic- a great picture of you swimming in it, though. Yeah. It's that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so many thanks to Phil and Keith and the, the folks, Trev, at the darkroom.com. They supply us with uh, recyclables. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Garland Camera in Garland, Texas, has been uh, tremendous in sending us uh, supplies. The Camera Mall in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, Leslie, Leslie has been going there and picking stuff up and uh, she's terrific. Bringing it back. And I, you know, Camera Mall folks, if you're listening, I owe you guys some t shirts. I didn't forget. M- meanwhile, Garland's like, where's my t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about me? T shirt? What boy? about me, boss? How about Andrew's analog? He sends you stuff. He's too. on the list. Oh, okay. <laughs> Andrew's Analog Service Center. He sends us stuff too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Boxes of uh, empty cans cursed. Yes. Uh, while I'm on a roll here, I really should just communicate to everyone out there, not that you don't know, but of the new FPP films that came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, FPP Black and White Infrared. Yes. 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter, Whoa. 4x5. Whoa. Yeah. You need an R72 filter. You need bright sunlight. You need gr- greens. Have you shot any 4x5 with that? Is that like one of these ones, though? Let's see. Yeah, what's it say though on it? Well, that's what I said. It's a it's a seven sixty nanometer. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. R seven sixty. Yeah. So seven hundred sixty nanometers. So, but it's like completely, you know, you can't see through it at all. The, but the film can see through it. The yeah. infrared capabilities of the film is seven fifty to eight fifty nanometers. It's science. It is. It, it makes no sense. Seven, what did you say? Seven fifty to eight. Seven fifty to eight fifty. Okay, well, that's what I wanted to know. Yes, yeah, science. Yeah, you never responded to my text. Now, <laughs> now Trev Lee from the darkroom.com, he's been testing this film. So he puts on his 35 millimeter SLR. He'll screw on that. R, generally speaking, it's called the R72 filter. That R72 infrared filter. 
and he puts his camera on auto and he just meters through the lens and lets the camera do the calculating. Really? Yeah. Yeah, science. That's crazy. It's crazy, right? Is he shooting with the Zeos? No, he's shooting with uh, one of those fancy Nikons that you guys use. What? The F3, F3, F2, something, oh, something. F3, come right through. No kidding. F3, F3, three, F3 three and a half, whatever it takes. I didn't think exactly. it was possible. Well. Because that's that that filter mark is about six F-stops. Yeah, so how can the Oh, camera... it's got to be it's more than that. Like, literally holding it up to the fluorescence, I can't see anything No, it's six. It. How can is the that camera really? You look it up. Maybe but I also I noticed, so. like, you know on lenses, they always have that little orange dot. That's your infrared focus. That's correct. Wait a minute, what? That, see, I've got the black dot. That's yeah. my focusing point. But see the little orange dot right next to it? Oh. That's where you focus for infrared. So why you focus? Off, why is it off the main focus, though? you got to ask Matt. That's <laughs> science! It's technical. But yeah, so you can focus from the hip if you use the little orange dot. Hey, sure. So yeah. you focus and then you turn it to that red. Uh, you focus no. and then. Yeah. Well, then... I'm just saying, if you want to shoot from the hip, like if I want to shoot you and you, right now you're five feet away from me, I can just turn five to the orange dot. And it, it, depending on what my aperture is, I get a, you know enough depth of field. Do you think you're going to? I'm going to give you some film. You're going to shoot some of it. Definitely. I've always wanted to shoot IR film. I never have. Tripod or no tripod? Uh, probably tripod if okay. it's six stop, unless it's like 3200 speed film. Doubtful. So the big news is that it's in 4x5. Uh, yeah. So to answer your question, I have not shot FPP 4x5 yeah. infrared, but Matt has. Ah, that was just, that was my next question. Spectacular results. We also have it in millimeter 16, no. which I've shot two rolls of. And Matt shot that too. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. Matt shoots everything. With his SR? Yes. S, S, S. And what'd you shoot? K3. Oh, that's Krasnogorsk, Krasnogorsk 3. 3. You, you got that down now. You can say it. I could say it. I couldn't say it before. Just like people, you know, Carlos, who works here in our shipping department? I, vaguely. I walked into shipping the other day. I was like. <laughs> and Carlos is like, oh, man, I can't whistle, Mike. I want to whistle. I can't whistle. <laughs> now, when John and I were working together in our 20s, yeah. I could not whistle. He doesn't remember the conversation, but no, we were I sitting don't. in the control room. I was like, John, I can't <laughs> whistle. I was like, <laughs> keep spitting my gum out. <laughs> Like I can't. One day, as you age, you started whistling. I swear to God. See if you stick with it long enough. One day, I was just like, your dreams can come true. Can you whistle? Yeah. Let's see, let's hear. Okay. How about you? Yep. There you go. You know, you could look up their whistling albums from the fifties and sixties. They're yeah. very atmospheric. And you hear a guy like... Remember that guy, the, the Russian guy, the video with that Russian... Oh, no, he's the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that guy. guy. There's that one verse of uh, Hocus Pocus by Focus. Oh, that's right. The he whistling does, verse. He does some mean whistling. Yeah. That's some mean whistling. That's some serious heavy metal whistling. It is. FPP black and white infrared, folks. Yeah, get some. Get some! So, you know, we've been doing this 14 years, and I, I have to tell you, I still don't feel... You know, my gripes a few years ago, many, you know, five, six years ago, was like, oh, you know, I, I don't want this to become a, a business. I don't want FPP to become like an industry. Mm. Well, that's what I do now, folks. Yeah. And I'm not complaining about it. And I still don't feel that our store is a store. It is a store, but I it's know. not a store. And I, I'll tell you why. Because what we supply is tools to people. Yeah. So, like the FPP black and white infrared, it's like we find the film, either we can get it manufactured or we, I do a lot of research of scientific laboratory films Whoa. that are not used for photographic purposes. Right. They're used for scientific. Yes, science! And then I get them adapted to the formats that I want. We test them, then bring them to you. We bring you a tool. So that's why I never feel like I'm hawking product to you right. folks. This is a very unique product. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm like, you know, oh, you know, if is just about selling their own film. No, I'd probably get insulted. Would I? No. Okay. Anyhow, FPP Black and White Infrared. Yeah. We already lost Mark. He's on Instagram. No, I'm look. I'm research. I'm working on it. Oh, okay, good. He's working on his stuff. Camera. He's got a project coming up. And the fact that is is available in such you know 35 great. Everyone loves 35, right. but the four by five and 16 that is special, special, folks. Very special. Special. I know what Matt Marash's next question is. Ah. Eight by ten? I'm like, I don't know. We got to find out. Wow, do you think so? I'm I'm getting back into photography pretty pretty steadily, and I wonder how long it'll take for me to get back to four by five. But that would be fun. Well, the four by five is fun for me. It's like a day in the park. Like you know what I mean? Like you pack your bags. It's literally a day in the park. Yeah, true. Yeah, with a big tripod. Yeah, like that time we did that thing. That's right with that guy. Yep, and that lady. Remember she came wandering. She was yeah, like. like 
it was at Ringwood Manor, and yeah. I guess maybe she was like sleeping in a car from a wedding from night. She just came like wandering up to us like ghost. Do you remember? Yeah. It's like, what are you guys doing? Wait, what do you guys got there? Birdhouses? <laughs> We're all walking around with our big boxes. Uh, FPP Color 125. It's been out of stock since 2020. The pandemic wow. killed it because yeah. of supply chain. Yeah. And uh, I've been uh, attempting to get it back into stock. It's back in stock. That's very exciting. I love it. And people are very happy. Yeah. It's, it was one of FPP's number one color films. It's a very unique color palette. It's my favorite. I, I think I have like three old rolls left that I've been hoarding, but now yes. if I can get it again. And do you recall, do you have the very special, almost impossible to find 120 version of that? Oh. I do. Okay. I have one or two rolls of that frozen somewhere. Yeah. I, may, I may have a roll of that as yeah. well. A very small batch came in. Oh, so. Of 120. Yeah. 120, oh, yeah. It's probably gone by now. I mean, look, there's, you know, all of the, like, when you say, oh, can it be in 120? Can, can it be? I wish I was, like, a warlock from the Bewitched TV show. Me too. Where you can just go, bring, cool. and, like, it just appears. I'd be asking you but for it's all like, kinds of cool shit. I have to figure this stuff out, folk. You know, if you were an actual warlock. Yes. Mark, what would you ask him for if he could just, bring? Because you have a good mind. I'd be like, oh, give me the winning lottery ticket. Oh, you mean, in, in, I, I'm thinking film stock. You're no, talking about the whole world? about like life in general. Oh, anything. I don't know. Well, okay, film stock. Let's keep it uh, perfect. Well, now you got me show. thinking about life, the universe, and everything. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm confusing. I don't know. Uh, like, Mike, make me a sandwich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bing! FPP Red Scale. You know, I've right? not, I, well, Red Scale, I mean, we can fake Red Scale. When you say fake, what do you mean? You run your film backwards. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, so that's... I don't need to use a genie wish for that. I want some <laughs> FPP 125 in 4x5. Yeah. 100, 100 slices for 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but FPP Red Scale has been out of stock also since like 2019, 2020. Yeah. Wow. Now, the great thing about the FPP Red Scale is it's... Well, it's 25 ISO, but it's DX coded. Mm. So you could pop it in any camera. Yeah. That's important. That reads that well. Yes. For me, because of the because of the type of photographer I am and the type of camera collector that I am, for me, I know it's ridiculous, and I'm not asking you to do this. I would love to see 127, you know, oddball stuff. 220. I'd love to be able to shoot 220 again without feeling like I'm wasting my money. Uh, 118, just oddball stuff like that. 126. 127 is. I've been trying really hard to to, to find anyone I know. Any any factory that currently exists that manufactures film, I've been asking about the yeah. 127. So we had it in stock. It's called Rarapan, made in Japan, once again, before the pandemic. And it went out of stock, and I just can't get any more. Yeah. There's a lot of oddball stuff that pops up and <clears throat> comes and goes. But uh... Now, how do you feel about the adapters, like that adapt 118 to 120? Is that something that tickles your fancy? 118? You mean running 120 film through... Wait. So if you have a 116, 616, or 118 camera, yeah. how do you... The fact that the film is not available, how do you personally feel about shooting 120 using oh. one of those? Well, I mean, maybe maybe this is controversial, but all the cameras I have that shoot 116 or 118 or 101 or one of those really oddball formats, um, I have... It's probably a Kodak, and I probably have the 120 version of it. So I may as well just shoot one the 120 version mm. of it. I don't care about having the faux panoramic, super wide look to it because you can always crop that. So um, I would love to. I would love some, you know to get a you know some fresh rolls of really old oddball stuff like that, 828 and 118 and things like that. to, yep. to try. But <laughs> 118, something like 118 would be tough because it's so wide. How wide? How many millimeters? It's like the, uh, one. I think it's 101 and 118. They're, it's basically like four by five roll film. Okay, <clears throat> it's huge. I forget offhand, but it's a good like four inches high, there almost are, four inches high. There are hacks you can do, like if you search or look for sixty-five or seventy millimeter film, and you, you could buy an original one eighteen roll with the backing paper, then you could kind of roll in. Yeah, that and that I've stuff. got. I've got one eighteen film in the freezer, even from like the forties. But really? uh, I just black and white. On it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How okay. Or if, if it wasn't then, it is now. Oh, estate sales. Uh, and and what, what is it? Is it, is it a mood? Like, you'll, you'll be in a mood one day. You'll be like, oh, I'm going to go out with my 118 camera, and I'm going to grab this roll of 
a Veracrum pan from 1950. Well, that's what I'm saying. I never do that because uh, because whatever that exact you know Kodak number three autographic number three A whatever that used 118. I can just grab the number one A autographic, which is the exact same camera that shoots 120, and just mm. it's so much easier to use that I never get around to it. But I would like to actually have some 118 film to go out and shoot that number three or that number four or all the oddballs. You know, the Kodak guys in the audience are probably freaking out because I'm messing up all the numbers, but I don't need to modify the camera to take a weird film in that case. If it was a, if it was a case of like, you know, like I got this guy right here, the Hasselblad. And it only shoots 828 film. Well, then, man, I wish I had some 828. If I had such a great camera as this, that's so unique. But in that case, for shooting those old Kodak folders, right? There's hundreds of them. I've got another letter here. This one's from Harry Lord. How to pronounce your name, Harry Lord? Just wanted to say hi. Okay. Hello, Mike Rasso and the gang. Just wanted to say that I have recently got my dark room set up and running after many years of it laying half finished. And I've really been enjoying listening and re-listening to your podcast whilst working in there. I'm unsure what podcast it was brought up in, but somebody mentioned Impossible Project no longer being a thing after a short Google search. I came across the movie An Impossible Project, which after watching cleared things up, but posed a question in my head and I thought it might be worth a discussion on the podcast. And that is, what has brought on this film renaissance? I've been shooting film since high school, mainly 35mm and 120 and it only seems to be getting more popular and expensive as time goes on. So I thought it would be interesting to discuss the companies that helped grow film to what it is again today, from Lomography with their film and cameras to Impossible Project to yourself at the FPP and all the big companies that are still making film like Kodak, Ilford, and Fujifilm. Fujifilm more so with instant photography, remaking the Instax wide cameras and making new instant film cameras and film. Also, a slight sidetrack, the question always seems to be film versus digital, But like you said on your podcast, there is no question it's a happy medium. The digital world is helping to keep film alive from from Instagram, Flickr, Pinterest, YouTube, and new apps like TikTok. It's interesting how YouTube has grown and brought a new generation into photography from YouTubers like yourself uh, to the Mijanju show. I don't even know that one. Mijanji. Hello, loving people. Welcome to the Mijanju show where we talk about super cool cameras and we talk about super cool things. Mijanji, Mijanji show. Negative feedback. Grainy days. King J Vapes, Awesome Cameras, and The Art of Photography, Digital Rev, with their analog-based episodes, to mention a few. Anyway, just thought this might be some food for thought on a podcast. All the best. We don't really create an idea. We just catch them, like fish. What year was that written? Oh, up top, there's no date. Oh, top, well, top, well top. you printed it on July 20th. Oh, that's new. That's fresh. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so. Yes. When, John. When film hit its lowest point. Yes. What made it start to curve up again? I guess that's the question. What brought this current research? Would it be Lomography? It's the same. It seemed like Kodak kind of just threw their hands up. It's exactly the same thing that happened with records. Yeah. Everything just got so digital and so sterilized and boring that people were just like craving analog warmth and just... I I I think that's what it was. Yeah, but who were the companies that helped to take that curve upward? In your opinion, oh. well, in, t- in, well, two, in two impossible th- in two thousand nine, when we first started, uh, and we went to the PDN, uh, Lomography was there. Yeah, yeah, I think Lomo was the big one then. You know, Lomography was there, and then in two thousand ten, the Impossible Project, and then it was just you know really just like a small group of kids. When I say kids, anyone from like you know fifteen through twenty five yeah. who just has that interest in finding their mom or dad's camera. Right. It was old technology got them interested. Absolutely. Like, oh, what is this old technology? Because young kids are very eager to embrace new technology, but there's also a bunch of uh, kids out there that also, you know, they listen to cassette Oh, retro tapes. is hip. The majority of our population just doesn't give a who. Do, right. Like, this is off their radar. Yeah, Like, sure. not even a thought about yeah, like, what, shooting with film. 90% of the population? Probably more. Don't you think, Mark? Wow. Oh, yeah, way more than that, I would yeah. say. Yeah. But the but the you know three percent of people who do shoot film are rabid about it. Where it yeah. used to be just sort of normal. No one ever talked about. Uh, of course, everybody has a film camera. Everyone shoots film, whatever. Mm-hmm. But now that it's like, you know, such a small I don't, niche. I don't care what your age is. If you're like into film, you're shooting film. You're a cool kid. You know, we could say it here because you're listening. Yeah. The people who are not cool are not listening, right. and they have no idea how not cool they are. Well, they're cooler <laughs> in other ways. That's John. You're so nice. Isn't yes. he nice? Oh, you're being diplomatic. You're kind. I had a guy, a guy, come into my store just like a month or so ago to buy 
guitar strings or something. And over over his shoulder, he had a a, a Nikon Nikkor mat over his shoulder. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, Nikkor mat, cool. And I turned around and grabbed my F3. And I said, I shoot an F3. And he's like, oh, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, let me get some Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. <laughs> like... It's just it's so normal now to yeah. people who shoot film. You just you know, like ten years ago, you'd have been like, "Oh my God, you shoot film! I yeah. shoot film! We both shoot yeah. film!" Secret That's crazy. society. Hey, now it's common shake. enough amongst the youngsters. I mean, this guy was you know I don't know what twenty two. Yeah, that uh, he's like, yes. Yeah, so what? All my friends shoot film. Hmm. Well, when we come back, Mark's going to talk about a camera. I still have ten letters. No, we'll do the next guy's name was really funny. Okay. Uh, we'll get, Mark has some show and tell. We'll be back. Hey, folks, Michael Rosso. Just a quick note about shooting home movies on film. The Film Photography Project has brought back the regular 8 format and now offers film developing and scanning right in our online store, filmphotographystore.com. As a matter of fact, we support filmmaking across the board with not only regular 8 film, but a full line of Super 8 film, and 16 millimeter film, including some brand new exclusive film stocks. Check it all out, filmphotographystore.com. Find your parents, grandparents, home movie camera and start shooting. Or head over to a thrift store, car boot sale, or ebay.com. Pick up a camera and start shooting some movies on film. Hey, we're back. Hey, Mark, you brought some uh, stuff in. Yeah. Look at that. What do you want to talk about? Where'd you get that beauty? This, I printed it today. No, the camera. Oh, the camera. Oh, stop right there. I called Mark out of the blue. I mean, you know, we've been on break, and I haven't talked to Mark, and you weren't on the last few podcasts. I called him out of the blue to compliment him, and I meant it sincerely because I have no reason on earth to blow smoke up Mark's butt. Mm -hmm. There's no reason I need to impress him. So I don't need to say anything nice to Mark. But I had to call you to tell. I was on Flickr because I was researching all the films that were re-releasing, and every time I went on Flickr and searched a film, I would find these amazing shots. And you were the author of those pictures. Oh, thank you. These were, John, okay. amazing shots. Like, they capture, like, everything Americana that you want. Like, a child at a lake jumping off, like, the dock, and the child is halfway between the dock and the water with a marvelous ex- expression on his or her face. I know that picture. Yeah. That's on, I took that on a Yashica mat. <laughs> I remember wow. that one. So, I think Mark, you're cutting yourself short by saying you don't. You, you well, know. I guess I guess what I'm saying is, I would be perfectly happy building a camera out of a cigar box and coat hangers, and going out and shooting kids jumping off a dock. And I and I, you know, so I'm not. Rather I'm not in it for the. the- Carrying Fancy around a technical high stuff. camera. Exactly. You don't need a Leica. Exactly. Oh, I'm not saying I don't need it. I'm not saying I'm such a good photographer <laughs> that it doesn't make any difference. I'm, I'm walking a fine wire here. Yeah. But I'm just saying, this camera is too nice for me. This this is like fancy, fancy. Um, what is it? Well, we haven't even gotten to that yet, have yeah, we? No. Okay, well, anyhow. We'll be folks, right back. I just want folks to know that, you well, know. thank you. Great stuff. Thanks. So what I got is, uh, this is a Hasselblad 500C. This is my first Hasselblad that I've finally gotten my hands on. Yeah, where'd you get that from? Um, some g- guys, the guys who come around and sell me stuff. Mm. And some guys in came in and said, oh, I hear you, we hear you buy cameras. I was like, yeah. And they pulled this thing out of a Jansport backpack. Side note, Mark owns Metropolis Music. So uh, he's a merchant with a brick and mortar store in Jersey City, New Jersey. And that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I, was, I buy and sell guitars. And... Sometimes there'll be like these estate clean out guys or somebody will find something in the garbage or who knows what and they bring it into me mm. and so I'll buy the guitar from them and then I'll tell them, Oh, by the way, I also buy old cameras. And they're like, Oh, what do you mean old? I'm like, No plastic. Like if it looks like it belongs in a museum, bring it. So I have various people who stop in every couple of months with some random thing they've gotten. Mm. But yeah, these guys brought this in. Um with that strap? Is that a No, cool, no, this is my cool strap. strap. Yeah, this is my uh, my Bobby Lee strap. Mm. Um, is that a guitar strap? Uh, this w- this was a popular strap that was used on guitars. I have the guitar version of this, and this is actually this is the actual vintage Bobby Lee strap, the one I have on my on my Nikon. Now, when you say Bobby Lee, is that the artist that designed the pattern on the strap? Not the pattern, but the, there there was a strap there was a strap maker who made guitar straps and camera straps and things back in like the sixties and seventies, and a lot of his designs are like super iconic. So these old this mm. one I think they I forget what this one's called the Jacquard. 
Jacquard flowers or Jean-Luc something. Jean-Luc Lacard. So anytime yeah. I get an old old straps like this or old camera straps, I hoard because they're super collectible if you're a nerd like me. Um, so like I have 50 of these in guitar. Uh, like the actual strap, not the actual actual, but like the exact same strap that Hendrix used at the 67 Monterey Pop Festival. Like I have ah. that. It's a Bobby Lee. And I have the exact same one. It looks just like this actually. So anyway, so this is a brand new strap I just got on uh, on Amazon a few months ago for twenty bucks. Um, honestly, I didn't want to risk as much as I love my vintage old straps. I didn't want to risk the old leather and the old mm, stitching that's heavy. with this heavy, extremely valuable camera hanging around my neck. Um, so this one I do take a little better care of than usual. I actually keep it in its own camera bag. I don't mm. just shove it into my jeans pocket while I'm walking around like everything else <laughs> I own. Um, I don't lay it on the grass when I'm you know doing something, but yeah. So these guys came in with this, and what this is, it's a, I, th I looked it up, I think it's a 1962, there's no film in it if you want to play with it, if you can make it do something. Uh, 1962, 500C, it actually oh, has, a has a serial number matching body, lens, and back. So this has been together since 1961 or 62. Oh, 80 millimeter. It's a little scuffed up here and there, but in general it's in great shape. It worked perfectly immediately, I immediately... Now, is, if someone wants to shoot with a camera like this, is a camera like this easy to come by? Do you know? It's not. It's they're easy to come by. You can jump on KEH and buy one today. The trouble is, the 500C, which is the original, not ideal version with this basic lens, that basic waist level viewfinder, mm -hmm. and a basic 120 back, would be about two thousand dollars. Ha. Huh. So they're not cheap. Right. And if and if you have a serial right number matching one, they 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 go for a premium. So possibly, you know, 2500 to 3000 And okay. folks listening, this is what's known as a medium format camera. You may have mm -hmm. said this. It takes 120 roll film. Mm -hmm. And you have a 120 and a 220 back for it? No. Um, the, the 120 back is the most common and obviously the most expensive. The back alone is $300 each for the back. Oh, so I only have one back for it. And I, I will only it. ever have one back. Uh, how do you, how do you take that? it out? It's going to break it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you turn... I, I, because this is because the dark slide is blocking oh, it. Turn that, and then okay. that pulls out. Yeah. Okay. So we, just the back alone, yeah, is three hundred dollars. Okay. They do make a two twenty back, which is a lot cheaper because nobody really shoots two twenty anymore. They did make a thirty five millimeter back, which actually shoots. What? It shoots a um, vertical panoramic, basically. So it shoots thirty five millimeter sideways, like it, like if it was in a TLR. Huh. That's very cool. And then they actually made a Polaroid back. It's got a great you know, glass. for studio, if you were doing studio yeah. photography, they made a Polaroid back that you could swap on just for doing test shots. Right. But well, those are worthless now because nobody uses pack film anymore. When do you when do you plan on shooting with it? Oh, I've shoot it. I shoot with it nonstop. You've shot some rolls with it. Oh yeah, tons. Yeah. Have yeah. you developed anything yet? Yep, they're all they're on my Flickr actually. No kidding. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, some good stuff. There's actually I shot a roll of uh, FPP X-ray through it that came out really cool. See, folks, I wasn't joking around. FPP X-ray film, a great tool to put in your camera. So you like the FPP X-ray? Yeah, I, I've only <laughs> shot the one roll with it, and I was amazed at the images that comes up. I'm just pulling up the, my own pictures here. but um, I'm like, uh, now going to Mark Delzell's. Like this, that just has this like, glow to it. This what is like that? this is at South Mountain Reservation. These are oh. this is a sculpture that they built around this tree made out of coat crazy. hangers. But yeah, the pictures just have this kind of cool glow mm -hmm. to them. Now this color film that you shot is this expired color? Uh, the there's a, every I mean technically everything I own is expired. <laughs> um, the most recent ones I posted with the uh, there's pictures of train tracks and things like that. That was very expired. Portrait 160. Who's this kid with the cone? That is a uh, girlfriend's best friend's son. <laughs> Kids eating ice cream cone, folks. It's ice cream all over. Just his pouring shirt. down. It was great. Best. Yeah, they were trying to get him cleaned up. I said, "No, wait. Let me just get a picture of him before you clean him up." That, that's actually that I took that in Nottingham, UK. Uh, so these pictures are all in Nottingham. Yeah, pretty much everything I shoot is always expired. Some of it is in better condition than others. Not everything I have has been frozen since I got it. But the FPP X-ray film. Well, oh, that is fresh. It's high. It's high. Con you, you like high contrast black and white film. I like interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, I like stuff that doesn't look like everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I tend, these days, I'm lazy, and if, if I'm on my way out somewhere and I just reach into my freezer and grab some film, rather than digging around, uh, most of the time I'll just grab like some Fuji 
400 or Fuji, you know, Superior 200 or 400, which is kind of boring. I'd like to dig in and get something really cool, but I, I have to organize because I have like three freezers full of film. And this Hasselblad 500C, how does it compare to like any other 120 film cameras that you've been shooting with mm. as far as like size, comfort, shooting with it? Is it easy yeah. to shoot? Like, That's interesting. It's, it's complicated to shoot. It, it's, it's sort of like my RB67 where... There's like six different things that you have to do before you can take a picture with it. And even this one, I've, I've now shot like six or seven rolls through it. And every time I pull it out of the bag and go, it's like, why is it not shooting? All oh, right, I have to yeah. pull the dark slide. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do this. I forgot, you know, like there's individual little things that you have to make sure you do. I wish yeah. there was somewhere on the camera that you could store the dark slide. Because I'm afraid of losing that. It's probably mm-hmm. 50 bucks for one of those. It's a, it's a little bit complicated to use. It's very expensive. The images that I've gotten with it haven't been... Way better than my Mamiya 645, right? For a you know a fraction of the price. I don't know how I don't know what those are going for now, but a quarter of the price, let's say, um, or or less. Do, do you? But this is six by six as opposed to six by four five. But so since this is so new to you, is it too early for you to say, oh, I kind of like my Mamiya better? Uh, well, the the sh- the shooting that I do tends to be street photography or out in a forest or like on train tracks and things like that. That's not really what this camera was designed for. This was designed to be sitting on a tripod mm-hmm. with lights. Like it's got features on it. You know, this is 1957, I think, <clears throat> when, this, when this came out. It has um, a shutter speed, uh, I mean, a flash sync at all shutter speeds. So it, it syncs at 500th, which is great for doing studio work. It has um, uh, electronic and bulb flash syncs on it. Uh, it has it has stuff that's really great for doing studio work, but shooting in a forest with a waist level viewer and the camera weighs five pounds, it's just it's not convenient for the mm. type of shooting that I do. But someday I hope to get it in the studio and actually put it on a tripod. I haven't even had this on a tripod yet, and shoot with it properly. And I think I will then love it um, and get it get mm. things lit properly and not crispy old portrait film through it and like do it do it properly do you own any well what's traditionally called hot lights although they're not hot anymore like do you own any like lights on stands that you could do like a home studio yeah i actually have a pretty good collection of actual vintage hot hot lights lights. um but i i have a couple of led panels that i use that's normally what i use around the house because they're battery powered so i can just pull them out like I, just yesterday I was shooting with this and I pulled one of those out. I opened up like a door and I just hung it on the corner of a door and I use yeah, that as a light. So like it's yeah. just so convenient. Um, and you can get those on Amazon. When I got them, they were like 80 or $90 a pair. Now they're like a couple hundred, but it's mm-hmm. still worth it. It uses a really common uh, ca- a digital camera battery. So I have four batteries for them and then you can just swap them out. So, yeah. yeah. Remember we were in Cleveland and uh, I brought my light panel yeah. and, you know, I just have light panel stand plug and matt pulls it out of his bag he's like here we go like because yeah. there's a slot on the back to put a battery yeah because we went into a pub for beers and camera and i brought the light panel and john was assisting matt his light panel boy he had the light panel mm-hmm. and matt was shooting his uh, 16 millimeter camera mm-hmm. and it was pretty cool yeah yeah that's why I like, they're made by that uh that company uh new ear oh N-E-W-E-R. New- yeah yeah yeah, so I got them. They come with their own carrying bag. They come with their own tripods. Um, I like them. And it's got spot on the back for two batteries. So you, if you put yep. two batteries on it, you yeah. get you get up tons of time. And folks listening, these we're talking about hot lights, although they're, although they're not hot anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they're not they're not they're not expensive. I, like I said, I, I think they're B and H photo. Let's, uh, I like I got mine on Amazon. I think the last time I looked, they were about two hundred dollars a pair. Yep. Which is not bad. Nope, yeah. not bad. Uh, because they are bright, they're powerful. They they have um, the warm and cool LEDs in them, with a with a knob, so you can dial yeah. in the exact the temperature, color temperature, temperature yeah. you want. Right. They're very versatile. Folks listening, you know, talking about ideas and aspiration. I aspire because I have lights. First of all, I'm thinking how these guys here who are sitting in the dark, how these guys would love a little more light in this oh. room. And then I think like, oh my god, I just I, I still want to do this video version of this podcast. <laughs> Why hard mount a couple cameras? Why uh, am I have such a? St- I, I think I should just buy two GoPros. All I need is a wide shot of you two goons. Hey, you know what? Right? Aim, aim for one a year. One a year. Do a do a video episode, mm. like Sweeps Week, <laughs> Shark Week, just Video Week. Just do one episode. Really, just need two GoPros. I'll put pants on. We'll right? do it properly. Yeah. 
One here, one on me, done. Yeah. And then you just edit the video and then just bounce the audio, audio for the audio podcast. podcast. Or and like or like one above. So when we're talking about a camera, you can cut to that. That'd be cool. Well, like a cooking show. I have to. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things to think about. Like, here's a Nikon I've prepared earlier. Like we'll like the shit storm on the shelves behind you guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this isn't very conducive no. to the eye. But I, I I disagree. This looks great. I mean, this you know what my studio looks like. This is. Mm. People would love to see how much junk you have in the oh, background. Oh, yeah, it'd be great. All I, the hoarders out there would as, love As we're see. sitting here, like I'm looking at your Yushika A behind Like as we're sitting here, I'm still looking at stuff you've got behind you on the Brownie. camera. I'm wondering what's in that black case up there. Is that poker chips? I don't even know oh, what that is. Oh, that's uh, guitar. Yeah, uh, guitar uh, effects. Effects, yeah. That's effects in that black Yeah, yeah you want to see what it is? Junky no, not right now. Okay. Ones. They are. They're from the 80s, though. Yeah, the boss ones. 80s they, boss pedals? Yeah, will they make any, get any money? The, yeah. Oh, I got to show you. If they're Japanese, they're worth a fortune nowadays. Come on. No, seriously. Oh, my. Here you go, Mike. You Why do you have such a those, junky case? Sell those and buy GoPros. Rock Tech. No, they're Rock Tech. Ro- oh, oh, no, they're not. They're not Hold on, let me boss. show you. They're from the 80s. It's a Rock Tech uh, box. So, folks, I also aspire to be, be a musician. A bass player. I failed 100%. Yeah. My opportunity has passed. When you guys no. are so cool. At Smooth, you, you guys write. were like, Mike, great, join in, whatever. Yeah, pick up Here. something. Yeah. You guys were so cool. Bang I was so something. embarrassed. Well, you, you documented it. Oh, right? okay. Here's what we got. Rock Tech Chorus. Garbage. <laughs> Just bought a boss. Rock Tech Overdrive. Oh, oh. No, for real. No. Okay. There's nothing Rock Tech ever made. That How about this? Cares Rock about. Tech Super Delay. That's actually kind of cool. Let, you know what you've got there? You've got the Lomography pedals of the music world. Like, there are people who would use those because they're kind of right. junky and retro, oh, but nobody serious would use them. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Lomography. I, I don't mean that. I don't mean that at all. You can get some really cool, interesting effects out of them. I was hoping that you'd be like, whoa, Mike, you can get a thousand. Well, it's just because John said yeah. boss. If you had old I, boss I, I pedals. Think they were boss. I have a pedal that I bought from Kevin Crawford that is a metal delay pape yeah. that has some kind of like uh, nuclear. Nuclear. It's, wow. It's radioactive, has that yeah. radioactive center. You know about that? No. It's a metal. It's big. It's a. It's the size like of a radioactive foot. nougat center. Like in, and you plug it in, and yeah. then you with your foot, you foot. Wow. A wah pedal. It's a delay. It's a delay. No, it's a delay. But it's a delay. All right. All right. It's cool. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe that's worth uh, two GoPros. Yeah, those are, yeah, worth, those a are worth a lot of money. Now I'm looking on my shelf, see what else I could show. That's what Mark. I'm telling you. That's uh, people would want to see this. People would be looking over your shoulder, like, whoa. It's like uh, looking at a garage sale. Look, what's that? What's that big old thing over there? The pink and blue one. That old four by five. What do they call oh. those? This was um, the butter guy, the, remember? The, the, oh, yeah, the yeah, Camerasaurus yeah, yeah. Camera or something? Dactyl. Camera Dactyl, that's it, Camerasaurus. Ca- Camera, Camera Dactyl, Dactyl. stuff like that is just laying all over the place here. With a lens, ready to go. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know, what time is it? Let's see. We may have run out of time. It's, uh, it's almost quarter to nine, a quarter to eight over here. <laughs> I never talked about my books. Uh, we never answered that guy's e- me- message. Which guy? Oh, Chad. we'll come back. We'll talk hanging quickly about Chad some books. Chad is still hanging. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. We can't leave Chad hanging. The whole thing is translating that idea to a medium. And in the case of film, it takes a long time, and you always need to go back and, and stay true to that idea. Keep checking that idea. And what you realize is the idea is more than you realize. Hey, we're back. Books. <clears throat> oh, books. Where'd anyway, you, where'd you so, find these? So the books? Hasselblad. Uh, there, so there you go. That's my Hasselblad. Uh, you talked to every. You said everything you want to say about the Blasso. I didn't. I really didn't say anything at all about it. But it doesn't. It doesn't need. It doesn't need to be said. I mean, everyone. Most people know it exists. Everyone knows it exists. Everyone's heard. It's this legendary camera. Every famous portrait you've ever seen from the '60s or '70s. Every album cover you've ever mm-hmm. seen was taken with this camera. It's <clears throat> iconic. Yeah. If you know, you see pictures of Andy Warhol holding one, or like Jerry Mankiewicz was always used one. Like it's, it's they're amazing. Yeah. Too good for me. So, uh, is this a new pickup for you? The, the books? books? Uh, literally. The, or did the bookmobile pull less into than twenty four hours ago? Well, I, the, I got these. You were in the store, and all of a sudden, the bookmobile pulled up. <laughs> no, I was at a thrift yeah. store. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, uh, Second Avenue in Union. Oh yeah, it's a good one. To that one, sealed there. Oh yeah, yeah, and a Delphonics record. What's oh. in, what's the name of the joint? Second Ave. Second Ave. And they have a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah I get some good stuff there. I, I bought some plates there too. I bought a quiche some dish and some plates. camera books. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's what you buy. At a, I'm getting leftover quiche for dinner when I get home. So is that the entire set? Or are you out? I don't know. That's the mystery of these. It doesn't say. 
So let me talk about them for a minute. Well, wait, let's see. Stop it. You got one through six. I know. Okay. Well, they're all. At least the they're in, at least they're in order. But um, so the deal is. Well, what are they called? Oh my God. So uh, <laughs> yes, I went to the thrift store yesterday. They had these six books. They were like three bucks each. So okay. I paid twenty bucks for the six of them. What they are, I don't really know what they're called. Peterson's Guide. It's Peterson's uh, f- photographic. What was it called? F- the photo photographic magazine. So any of you old folks, I had I did, I'm not familiar with it. I've never seen it before. I'd never heard of it. But photographic magazine apparently had this thing they did called the Blueprint series, mm. which was little tips and tricks. So in the magazine there'd be, you know, biographies and pictures and ads and this and that. But then they would have one section yes. that was, hey, here's an idea that you can use how to get better pictures or how to use a flash or how do you do this and that. And what they did was they took all of those magazine articles and oh, bound them together. Oh, that's nice. So the, the, the books that I have... There you go. How, let's do, you, see. how do you make and use so a cross-screen ba- filter? Number one is Basic Guide to Photography, Photo Lighting Techniques, Guide to Architectural Photography. Oh, you got number six. Photo Equipment You Can Make. I'll talk about that in a sec. Guide to Creative Darkroom Techniques. And then number six is Photographic Blueprint... Oh, yeah, Photographic Blueprint Series. I don't know if there are seven or ten or thirty books in this series. If you look them up online, it's really hard to to um, track down how many there are in the series. This particular one I have is um, is hardbound in blue. They didn't all look like that. And also the ones I have oh. are copyrighted like 1972 or 1973, which is basically when the uh, magazine started. So I don't understand. Yeah, this is this is copyrighted 73. So I don't I don't know how they did that, but. I don't know exactly when these were printed, but I was going to say, the thing that's really great about them is because they're from the 70s, they're really simple. They just say, you want to take a better picture? Try this. Do this. It's it done in very simple terms. A lot of pictures. Um, like, let's pull out, um, yeah, let's just like the basic guide to photography, which is book one. They talk about everything from, you know, what's depth of field? What does exposure do? What happens if you do this what you know this kind of flash that kind of flash here's how to use a tripod here's how to what happens if you use a red filter on black and white what happens if you use a black and white film um, and then there's actually a section in the middle of the book that's actually printed in color because the whole book's black and white oh. so the middle is you know here's how you can shoot with color film and here's how color film works when you get to uh, the architectural photography book which is book three it talks about tilt shift lenses or you know a, rise and fall you know front elements on uh, view cameras and things like that and how to shoot buildings straight and blah 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 photo lighting techniques gets into all different kinds of lighting this is a uh, this is my favorite this is my favorite one of the group though F- um book number four is photo equipment you can make yeah right. you're gonna start some projects what do you got We're looking at the the 70s models oh the the 70s bathing suits, the 70s lightings, I mean... So photo equipment you can make, and the contents are how to make a camera dolly, light boom, soft light, reflectors, mm. background stand, how to make a 10-minute film dryer, how to make a darkroom timer. You, pull, know the big, you know the big darkroom timer? Whoa. It, there's, a, there's a diagram in here. It tells you <clears throat> where to get the motor to make the, to make that hour, the minute hand turn, the second hand turn, how to make a print washer, how to make a mat board cutter, and it's just laid out yeah, so everything nicely. Everything you need to know for crying out loud. Like, literally, I went through, I, I sat and read through all six of these books last night. and Oh, look at that. I was very, very impressed. And I learned a couple things. And, and it's, because, like I said, because it's, because it's from the 70s, there's n- digital didn't even exist. So they, don't, they yeah. don't reference digital in any way, which is nice. They don't say, it's oh, well, if, if you can set your camera to ISO 100,000, go ahead and do that now. And that's how we need to take that picture. Like everything, all photography books these days are geared towards digital cameras that can do magic things. Yeah. But this is just really nice, basic stuff. There's a whole thing on your Goss and Luna Pro light meters. God, I love it. It's it's great. So I, 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 this was a complete fluke that I found these in the craft and hobby section of the thrift store, but highly recommend. Peterson's Photographic Blueprint Series, folks. If you look those up, and then, like I said, I mean, you can go back and play it back slow. But as far as I can tell, there are six books, and I listed those six off. And uh, you know, they they seem to sell. I, I looked them up on A Books and Biblio, whatever, and this and that. They seem to sell for like four or five bucks a piece. They're not expensive. Right. So yeah, grab the set. Thank you very much, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you very much.
you guys have been great. It has been such a pleasure to like spend my time with you. Oh, wow. Mike, Mike, you're like a Buddhist now. <laughs> you're like all calm and like appreciative. And, well, we'll talk about so some some, some other. Sh- Dude, I I've changed my life. I was a sugar holic. Mm-hmm. You know, I, in the last six months, folks, I have drastically changed my life. What does that mean? You're a, addicted to shivering. Sugar. Oh, sugar. <laughs> Sugar. I've, sugar. I've exercised sugar from my life. Oh, well, yes. I can I can tell. Yeah. Test it out. Yeah, I have to tell you folks at home, you know, I'm really, I, I, I think about these things. I'm like, okay, you know, how can I make the show better? And at first I was really trying to make the show as informational as possible. Hmm. But I don't know what people want. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Oh. Do, do you like the more drive time, you know, radio friendly show with a lot of sound effects or... Do you want to tone down and mellow? Do you want I don't. the Peterson's version, right? <laughs> Plain, basic, right? Facts. The NPR version. Yeah. No, I think this is. I think banter is good and joking around. I mean, I think everything that we said today, you should leave in, except all that really horrible racist stuff John was saying about Norwegians earlier. Yeah, but those guys cut that out. Uh, yeah. The world needs to know. Yeah, but we're going to be back very soon, and we hope you will join us. The idea, the idea is, is more, more than, you than you realize, and if, and you're, if true you're true to it. To it When the work work is finished finished and some some years years go by, by, you can can even get get more out of it it, 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 if you've been been true to the idea idea in the first first place. place. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah.
It's all in the past now.